wherever you're sitting, in a car. Maybe you're not sitting, maybe you're running. I don't know, but you're listening because you can hear my voice and therefore you can hear me say, welcome to Can You Take This Photo Please? My name is Justin Hamilton and I uh, thought we hadn't had a little direct chat in, uh, in a few podcasts and I thought I would uh, catch up with you and see how you're doing, let you know what's been happening uh, this end of the audio file. Uh, we had the final shows at the Rhino Room in Adelaide and they were they were a lot of fun. Uh, on the Friday night, I was uh, the nominal headliner. W- headliner at a late, late show just means that you last. But um, that was a fun gig. Uh, that was uh, It was nice to just get up and not have any responsibility other than the, the minutes that you're doing on stage. And uh, then we had the final late show at the Rhino Room uh, on the Saturday night. And uh, it's funny, I wanted to MC it because, you know, I'd uh, MC'd the, the very first one that I ran back in uh, 2000. And I wanted to... Look, to be, to be honest, I th- this is probably going to sound a little bit cocky, but I, I wanted to run it because I, I wanted to run it right. I wanted to make certain that it didn't blow out. I wanted to lead by example and I wanted the show to be as good. (coughs) Pardon me, I thought I was going to cough then. Uh, I did cough. Uh, I just wanted the show to be as good as it possibly could be. I wanted it to be uh, something something that was of a high standard. I, I, I hated the idea of the Rhino Room going out on a show that was, oh, you know, it was fun, everyone did 35 minutes, it finished on Thursday. Now, it's fun to make those jokes, but, you know, sometimes you just want the show to be good. And so so I hosted it, and I I was really happy with, with everything. I was really happy with everyone who was on, I was really happy with the effort that uh, everyone made, and uh, I thought the audience was fantastic, and... God damn, I'm sure you've seen uh, uh, the, the, the photos online. Craig Egan getting down on one knee at the very end of the show to propose to his girlfriend. <laughs> and it was it was 100% Craig Egan. It was great. I really enjoyed it. And then uh, afterwards, uh, it was uh, time to have a few drinks. And then, you know, I just... It's funny, I thought... Uh, you build it up in your head. You think it's going to be something quite momentous. You think there's going to be a moment. You you feel like you you want to have a have a a scene play out, a scene that you will remember for the rest of your life. <coughs> and um, that just didn't happen. It just got to the end of the night, and it was time to go. And there were lots of people, and there was too much going on, and. So I just walked out and saw a taxi and <laughs> got in and I was home and it was like, oh, well, I guess that's that. And uh, I will never see that venue again. I will never have the opportunity to uh, tread that stage or stand in front of those people who sit in uh, that perfectly shaped room and uh, tell some jokes for the first time. That was always my thing about the Rhino Room. It was where I would bring out uh, lots of new ideas. And even on the the final show, I I told a story that was brand new from uh, the night before. Just a a very short one, but keep the tradition alive as long as you can, I guess. So it's all done. It's all gone. And now the Melbourne Comedy Festival is coming up. And uh, if you go to comedy.com.au, you will be able to see uh, the details for my show. And it's it's a little bit all over the place. So when you when you get in there, have a have a hard look, because uh, you know we had to move a Saturday show because I'm going to be up in Sydney doing support for Will Anderson at the Opera House. If you haven't got tickets for that, go and check it out. It's the fucking Opera House. I can't say no to that. I get an opportunity to perform there. I'm I'm going because it's the motherfucking opera house and I don't want to get to a point in my life where I take that shit for granted and Will and I always have a ball there and uh, you know he's in such fine form if you're if you're in Sydney yeah do yourself a favor (laughs) and come down Uh, but uh, yeah shows in uh, shows in Melbourne are a little bit all over the place so when you go to comedy.com 
comedy.com.au. Have a close look and uh, make certain that uh, you uh, pick the, a night that's re- conducive to coming along. Uh, the Shelf has uh, season 14, three shows. And I think there'll be an announcement at the end of that uh, last show. So, if you would like to come along, uh, please do so. I would, uh, if you get to the final night and you don't have a ticket, uh, make certain that you turn up to the door. There's usually, you know, a handful that you can get behind the counter. And, uh, yeah, if you've been thinking for a long time that you'd like to go, I would suggest that you would see this one. I'd I'd strongly suggest that. Like, I really strongly suggest that. And that's on the 3rd and 10th and 17th of April. Maybe the 17th. Maybe the 17th. Otherwise, uh, things are pretty good. Uh, I've gotten over the uh, kidney stone operations and that is great. I'm just starting to, uh, about a week week and a half ago, I started to feel a little bit normal again. And so that was, uh, God, what a relief, right? What a relief. Uh, Just recovering from general anaesthetic is uh, quite full on isn't it and it uh, really exhausts you and I, I I know lots of people were saying to me oh you're crazy you know you have an operation you fly to Perth do a festival you come home you, f- you do more gigs then you have an operation and then you fly to Adelaide but festivals don't say oh yeah hang on we'll, we'll just we'll just wait you know that thing that you've been planning for six months why don't we just put it off for a week and we'll we'll do it again? And I was fine to perform. Uh, I was more than fine to perform, but uh, it just kind of wore me down, you know. Like if I was too sick to perform, I wouldn't have done it. But I was I was fine to perform, but it was inevitably exhausting. So uh, I've been uh, when I've been getting some quiet time, I've been really trying to have some quiet time and uh, getting myself physically back on track. And yeah, feeling pretty good for it, actually. Yeah, starting to starting to feel good. So that's that's quite nice. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, there's some fuck. There's some good TV coming up. Jesus Christ! There's so much good TV coming up. The final season of The Leftovers, which I don't know if I'm meant to tell you this, but I've seen the first episode, and that's all I'm going to say. The Leftovers. Uh, Fargo season three, Carrie Coon, the actress in both of them. Oh, exquisite. I love her. I just, I'm a real fan. I can't wait to see her in season three of Fargo. I thought season two of Fargo was one of the best seasons of TV I've watched. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this new season. And I've been enjoying Noah Hawley's work on Legion as well. I think that's been uh, quite fascinating to watch. Uh, the, the, The standout for me this year so far has been uh, Atlanta. You know, I, I, I heard people raving about it and then I watched it and I feel like people didn't rave enough. And uh, my friend uh, Will and I have a joke about uh, Donald Glover about how I- he has lots of great things happen and everyone always says, ah, oh, finally, that guy's getting a break. And it's like, but he's got heaps of breaks and he's brilliant in all of them. And then uh, that was just a funny joke. You know, some people... You know, some people just have funny narratives that are aligned with them, and Donald Glover's seems to be all his fans go, "Oh, finally he's getting a break. Oh, finally he's great on Community. Oh, finally Childish Gambino. Oh, finally Atlanta. Oh, finally he's Lando Calrissian in the new Star Wars." I think he's fine. I think he's going really well. But then I watched Atlanta, and it's like Jesus Christ, Th- it is spectacular. I think it is by far the the best comedy I've seen in a long time, and I'm not even really certain it is a hundred percent of comedy. Well, it is. But it's it's something else. It's kind of surreal and pointed and has a lot of social commentary and is really grounded. And I think his performance in it, all, all of them are fantastic. But, geez, he's, he's kind of, he's, he's, he's really heartbreaking. The latest episode I saw, which is the episode, uh, which I won't give, give it away because I would like you to watch it at some point if you haven't already. Uh, it's him trying to get money from a, from a manager in a nightclub. And it is. It's got a scene right towards the end that made me laugh out loud and broke my heart at the same time. It was great. It was so good. Um, but yeah, so it, it, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, getting through the festivals and 
uh, we have um, Rove has a new show on ABC Two, uh, which is about Doctor Who. It's called Whovians. It will be taking place after each episode of Doctor Who. I'll be doing uh, some writing for it and maybe some filming of stuff. Uh, I, d- I don't really particularly have any desire to be uh, that much on screen these days. I think I might be starting to lean elsewhere. But uh, there's some ideas that we're, g- we're throwing around and uh, I think it'll be fun. And it's good to see Rove back on TV uh, in his natural habitat as well. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun at radio. I think Sam Frost has really uh, taken a big step forward uh, this year. Uh, personally, and this is my opinion, and this is does not reflect on anybody else, but this is strictly my opinion. But last year, I kept telling everyone, leave her alone and let her find her way. And uh, this year, they have left her alone and she has found her way. Last year, she didn't know what her way was because people kept fucking telling her how to be her. (coughs) And uh, anyway, it just feels good to be right. (laughs) It just feels good. It's like, oh man, I've seen such improvement in her in the in the first couple of months uh, compared to what she was trying to do last year, and it wasn't her fault. But anyway, that's my opinion. That's the opinion that I will stick by. If anyone from the station says, what do you mean by that? I will say, uh, did you listen to the podcast? You know how I said it in plain English, like plain language? It's almost like it was radio, but more fucking interesting, wasn't it? Anyway... I'm enjoying working uh, with her and Rove uh, up here in Sydney, and I'm really enjoying living in Sydney, actually. It is uh, a fun town. Don't get me wrong, when uh, this radio contract finishes at the end of the year and I have to uh, go back to earning a living f- uh, purely from stand-up, whew, this rent is going to turn out to be a fucking millstone around my neck. But hey, we've got nine more payments. Nine more payments, so let's enjoy ourselves, people. Let's feel good good about shit. Uh, I don't know if you've ever checked out my Tumblr site. I'm into it. Uh, Please go and check it out. It's just full of stuff that I'm fucking into. And I will uh, will update it. I was, you know what, I was going to update it uh, recently, uh, or actually a few weeks ago. I had a, I had a, um, a list. I had a list of four things. I'm trying to find that list uh, because I still have it. But I had a list of things that I wanted to add to the um, to the site, and uh, then uh, and I'm just looking up a name because I want to make sure I get it right. But there's a there's an actor that I really really dig <laughs> so much that I can't think of his name. I, but it's um oh Mahashala Ali who. Um, who you may have seen in who was the best thing in Luke Cage and uh, was in uh, you know often the best thing in fucking House of Cards as well in my opinion and he won the Oscar for best supporting actor at, uh, for Moonlight and he was so good he was so good but I had a he was down with uh, the leftovers and a couple of other people and things that I was going to you know, talk about how much I loved, and then he won the Oscar, and I thought, ah, now I'm going to look like someone jumping on the fucking bandwagon. This is a disaster. But, and then I didn't update it. But I don't know why I give a fuck what anyone thinks, Uh, so I will get around to updating that, hopefully over the weekend. Uh, But heaps of things there, and, uh, you know, I just try to bring a bit of joy to the internet by just being into shit and not being an arsehole about it at the same time. So yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, a few other projects in the pipelines. I think I've centred on one. I think there was I had too many ideas for a little while there, and then and then once the uh, oh god, once the fucking kidney stone debacle kicked in, Jesus Christ, it took me a while to bounce back from that. It, it really killed me creatively, uh, creatively uh, to such an extent, you know, because I just couldn't concentrate. I was always so tired. But um, I feel like it's all started coming back in the last couple of weeks and saying goodbye to uh, the Rhino Room was a, was a very cathartic experience. It's, it now means that I don't really have a, a physical tie in the comedy scene to Adelaide anymore. And uh, I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's a good thing. 
you know, like I'll be performing at the new Rhino Room, like that's, uh, you know, I'll still go back and perform in Adelaide, but I won't have that legacy, I won't have that history, and that has gotten me to a point where I'm starting to picture this year quite differently. So that's why you should definitely be, if you're thinking of going, at the shelf this season, and definitely the one on the 17th. If, if that's the only one you've ever been to. Maybe, you know, you've never gotten to it and you think, oh, fuck, I better get to it. Well, I th- I'm just suggesting that's the one you get to. A lot of good things come from endings, I think, and uh, uh, endings often insinuate new beginnings. And uh, there's, been a, there's been a little bit of shuffling of uh, my life in the last few years and a... a, a, a f- letting go of some ideas and ways that I perceive myself and the ways I want to feel about myself and you know you just have to sometimes you just have to take stock of your life examine your life try to be honest with yourself try to feel exactly what's going on and not what you think you should feel Anyway, I'm, I'm a bit worried this is turning into a self-help podcast. So uh, let, maybe we should just get into the interview. Now, the, now the young fella on this uh, podcast uh, today, Jared Jekyll, uh, got in touch with me and, and, and asked to be on it. And uh, I've uh, we, we've gigged together before, and I've I've enjoyed his company backstage, uh, but I hadn't really sat down with him before, and I didn't really know what to expect. And <laughs> I had a ball. Like we. I don't know if he was deflecting when I was trying to talk about him a little bit more. We could we go into a lot of pop culture chats and talks about things, but um, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, I think he may have walked into my house and thought, fuck, what is this idiot man child done? He has, he is more pop culture than man. Uh, but I think he just looked around and saw a lot of stuff that kind of uh, springboarded some uh, ideas and stories from him. But I had a I had a really good time chatting with him. You might not, you might not have uh, heard of him before, uh, and you know, he's at that stage where he's six years into his career, which when you're six years into your career feels like a long time. And uh, but it's not, and it's it's all right to feel that it is. But I think he's got his head screwed on pretty right. I think he knows that he's uh, still developing and uh, and finding his way. And you know, I, I feel like he. Definitely someone you should keep an eye on. He'll be down in Melbourne. He'll give you the dates at the end of this uh, podcast. So uh, I might put him on uh, the second week of the shelf. So if you're going to be there on the second week, you'll be able to check him out and see what he brings to the table. Well, it has been nice having a chat with you. Maybe we should do something uh, a little bit longer uh, in the next few weeks. I hope you've been enjoying Ben Elwood. I I thoroughly enjoy uh, sitting down with him and talking about stuff I, I, I find him to be a uh, really good company and I, I hope you find him to be good company as well he's a, he's a very passionate man and he's a very lovely guy and you know when he gets upset about things it, it comes from it, c- it comes from a real sense of injustice you know <laughs> he, he just he, he wants to think the best and he wants he wants the world to be the best and it, it can be it can be frustrating for those people it they're the types of people that sometimes they can come across as a bit shouty, but it, it's not. It's it's because they get their heart broken too often. They get their heart broken with the way the world can play out at times. The the cold indifference of not just the universe, but the people that inhabit it. And uh, I, c- I can relate to a lot of the things that uh, he talks about uh, and, and where he comes from and you know, sometimes he opens my eyes to things and I'd like to think that sometimes I open his eyes to things. So I've really enjoyed that uh, dynamic being introduced in 2017 to this podcast. I know most podcasts just stay the same, but, you know, and it probably works against me. Some people might think, fuck, I don't want this or why can't it just be like it used to be or where's Bron? Where is Bron, actually? I should catch up with her. But that's not me and uh, I would rather have a podcast that is successful to the people I want to be successful with than appealing to a broad, broader range of people that I 
don't respect because they just want me to stay the same. I'm changing, you're changing, we're all changing. David Bowie once sang a song about changes. That's right, it was uh, the man who <laughs> sold the world. No, it was a song called Changes. Anyway, never let anyone pigeonhole you. That's, that's my message. That's the message that you get from this opening. Never let anyone pigeonhole you, mate. Fuck that, mate. You're better than that, mate. You're better than that. Fuck all of them. Fuck all those losers out there that have no idea about creativity and have no idea how to tap into the wellspring of their lives. Fuck them. Fuck the people who are tedious. Fuck the people who cause trouble when they're bored with their lives and they don't know what else to do. Fuck them. Um, don't you reckon? This is my train spotting moment. Choose life. Choose telling dipsticks to go fuck themselves. Choose three different types of gelati and put it all in the same bowl. Choose to listen to David Bowie 24-7 if that's what you want to do. Choose the artist that you like. Choose when you get angry, you go and buy a Hall of Notes Greatest Hits vinyl double record, which I may have done yesterday. Choose to not get up out of bed. Choose to get up out of bed. Choose to go to the gym. Choose not to go to the gym. Choose to give someone a dirty look at the gym because they're on their fucking phone while you're trying to listen to a podcast. That's how fucking loud they're talking. Choose to be nice to your mum. Choose to tell someone who isn't your mum to go fuck themselves. Choose a moment in your life where you just sit down and you go, oh yeah, maybe I wasn't as good as I could have been and I can be better. Choose the right pants to go with the right shirt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, I'm, I hope you're still listening, but I'm having a great time. All right, let's get to the interview. I hope you're well. I hope people are treating you right. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're feeling good about things. And I hope you've got a little bit of luck in your life as well. I'll chat with you again soon. And I hope you enjoy this little interview. As uh, the immortal Billy Joel once said, don't go changing to try to please me. Sir. Now, I feel like you were about to just launch into something interesting and I thought, well, let's not waste it. The microphones aren't on. So uh, what were you going to say? Uh, you were saying that when you were, what, 14, 15? When I was 15. 14, I was a bit of a goth. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was really into placebo. Oh, and yeah. And I watched um, some live footage of Brian Morco and David Bowie singing Under Pressure together. Oh, yeah. And then they smooched. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I was going to say. If you, if it, don't, don't say that's all I was going to say. That's fantastic. That's probably one of the best openings we've had to this podcast. Okay. I... I reckon if you were a rock star and you got to do a duet with Bowie that ended with a smooch, you would go, well, you know, who needs Grammys? Who needs, well, who exactly. needs gold records? Exactly. Like, that's the ultimate, isn't it? Oh, man, can't believe he's going. Oh, yeah. Look. Brian Morco, placebo, died in the ass. Yeah, you know what? I picked up um, Without You, I'm Nothing on vinyl. Oh, yeah. And it is a scorching album. I like, love, I, I love, I love. Yeah. At the same, because I see your Radiohead uh, paraphernalia. I got into Radiohead, Placebo, Velvet Underground, like all at the same time. Okay. So, how, how did that happen? Like, was that, do you have uh, older siblings or? Nope. Um, I went to a pretty uh, conservative Jewish school. Right. And there was one girl in my year who um, was a family friend. Our parents were best friends. Hang on, was there? Uh, sorry, was there? There was yes. one girl that you related to, or there was only one girl? There was one girl in. Oh, my really? <laughs> wow, that's we're weird. homeschooled. It was my sister. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was like one girl in my year who was a little different, right? Um, and I knew this because I'd hang out at her house. And yep. She had all these crazy posters. She was she was like a bit of a goth. Yeah. Um, but you'd never know what people were into at my school because we all had to wear. The uniform. Of course. This is Mariah College. I don't know if right. you know of it. It's no, a, where is it? It's a semi-strict Jewish school in it down from Bondi Junction in Queens Park. Right. Yeah. What do you mean what do you mean semi strict? What do you mean by that? Is that there's oh, other places a, where you are incapable of representing yourself or it's a religious Jewish school. Right. But not like Orthodox. Right. But they hope that everyone I think they'd love if everyone became Orthodox. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. But so this girl, um, Lauren, she actually now um, writes for Rolling Stones. Oh, really? As of recently, she. That's cool. She's a diehard music lover, and I've yep. known her since I was about ten. And now yep. she works for Rolling Stones, so that's cool. But uh, we used to uh, wear leather, like. I have this. I had this huge leather matrix jackety thing that I wore to placebo. Great. And we'd um, sniff way too much amyl. Right. And then <laughs> Great. our hearts would come out of our chests. Yeah. And what you need is a leather jacket for while you're slightly overheating and your exactly. heart's beating. You just need to really, if you really want to sweat. Yeah. You need that neo jacket. Yeah. Exactly. It, well, exactly. I felt like I was the one. <laughs> and then we would just like wig out to Stefan's cool guitar solos. Right. That band is crazy. Like the lead singer, Brian, is bisexual. The guitarist is gay. And yeah. the drummer is straight. Is, is, so it, like, is it still the same drummer? Didn't, or did he? No. I think he's left. I saw, them, I saw them once live and that was in, I think, 2000. 2003. Yeah. Same year that you saw uh, Dandy Warhols in Bowie. Yeah, in Dublin. In Dublin. Yeah. I think I saw Placebo that year as well. Oh, yeah. Were they, did they have Elbow yeah. with them? Yeah, I yeah. did see that. At I saw that Placebo. in Melbourne. Yeah. Get out of town. Yeah. Well, I was at the Sydney one being trampled on. Uh, right. And oh, we met these we met these weird folk, believe it or not, <laughs> and they were telling us how they were uh, amateur vampires. So they'd go and they had some hookups and they'd get blood from a blood bank and they'd drink it. And I wasn't weirded out, but they were just really annoying people. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Is, isn't it the worst when you meet someone who's trying to be whoa yeah. to you and all you're really thinking is, nah, just fuck off. Like, they were just annoying people. I, yeah. Like, I thought the blood drinking was cool, but their personalities just really grated on me. Right. But a lot of Who would have thought the amateur vampires would be exactly. annoying? Exactly. <laughs> um I bet you they write their names with numbers. Um, <laughs> I, everyone had like spikes on, like spiky bracelets and, you know, gothy stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I got knocked down to the ground and I had spikes on me and all right. this business I got trampled on. And then uh, the bouncers like carried me out the back and um, <laughs> they bought me a Gatorade. Oh, really? Yeah. Get you back on track. Yeah. And I was like, thank fuck, I got away from those vampires. Right. Have you ever talked about that on stage? No. Man, that's a funny story. It's, I, I'm, okay, so when I talk to people, it's usually on podcasts, mm. um, I find out I have all these really good stories yeah. to tell on stage, but I'm not so much of a, I'm becoming very slowly a storyteller yeah. guy, but I'm such, I'm such a formulaic gimmicks, gags oh, guy. Oh yeah, but how old are you? How old was I? No, how old are you I? now? Turning 29. Right. And how long have you been doing comedy? Six years as of two weeks ago. Right. Now, you know, it it takes ages. Yeah. Like, you know, so it doesn't mean, I wouldn't say go and do this story immediately. Of course. But uh, it's a reminder that you do of have course. these stories. So yeah. then maybe yeah. one day when you want to tap into it. But you could still do your thing and maybe What's happening? leave I've a story in it. In my latest show, I'm doing a f like a handful of true true to life stories. Right. But I mean, I'm such a big showbiz guy, like I studied music theatre, so I always have like magic or music, yep. some weird shit in my shows. But my my dream is to just do an hour of observational comedy. That's like my dream. You know, there is, uh, as someone who started off in a duo, we had guitars, we used to do sketches, yep. you know, we had costumes, we had the whole shebang. It is the greatest moment of your life when you turn up to a gig with nothing. Yep. And you just walk on stage yep. and for an hour you entertain and you've just had a microphone. It is it is a moment where you will soar with happiness. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't have to get a DI, don't have to do a sound oh, check. Tell me about it. You I know. remember it was only this year, it was the first time, so I do like looping, beatboxing yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I um, went to the store to do a gig and I forgot to bring my stuff. And I was like, how'd that happen? Stuff it. What, how did I forget to bring my stuff? Yeah. Oh, because I got a lot of stuff. Oh, you, you didn't take all of the stuff. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. So I drive. Yeah. So I you just, just didn't have left it. In the it car. In. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So I bit the bullet. I was like, no, I'm just going to do seven minutes of stand up. And yeah. I did it. And it was the most fun I had in ages. Yeah. Because it was like a high pressure gig. 
plus I yeah. hadn't done like pure stand up at the store before. Yeah. Oh my god. And I it went so well and I, I it, it was like you got it was the like taste. a drug. But you know uh what will be good and we'll, 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 I want to get back to you, uh you being a kid but uh what will be good is you know you've got all these skills from mm. the first 6 years of your career and then mm. you develop the th- the skills of just telling a story or just yeah. telling jokes or whatever and then you find ways to intertwine it. Yeah, and then I can't wait for 10 years from now when I burn out to have a wife and kids. Oh, yeah. or Build you five more shows. Mate, or you can just, you know, do what I've done and not have a wife or kids and uh, not be burnt out and just know that at some point you're probably going to die alone. Yeah, but you're the best. Well, and all the best die alone. Right, yeah, That's exactly. That's what my mum says. <laughs> yeah, well, good on your mum. Uh, how did your uh, mum and dad take you to being a goth as a, as a teenager? I don't think they knew. I don't think they... Really? They... So my, my parents, I've come from a really just regular nuclear family. My parents are still together. How boring. Yeah. Um, how dare they? And I think they were just, they were so accepting of everything I did. I don't even think they paid enough attention. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good that you could go out and experiment and express yourself. We Though, what was it like being a goth in Sydney? Like I always, you know, the goths that I've always been the most impressed with mm. were the ones in Brisbane. Because, man, that is a humid motherfucker Tell of a town. And it. I always look at them and go, yep. you really have to be into this, and I respect that. I remember once um, I was on a train home from school, and it was like a real scorcher. I was with my friend Leonie, and we are in this um, in one of the compartments, and everyone else there was a goth. Oh, just right. Just head to toe black. Yeah. And I just remember saying, I was thinking it, but I accidentally said it out loud. I was like, whoa, bad day to be a goth. Um they didn't give me much of a reaction. Right. Because they're all dead inside. Yeah. Well that's but part of the membership. Because it was only probably a little bit before that that I found out that black attracts the heat. Right. So now I have this weird OCD about it. Like, I check the temperature. I'm like, no, nah, I can't wear black today. Right. Because my girlfriend only wears black. Yeah, right. She's also always cold. Right. I feel, I, I don't know, like, you know, don't want to cast aspersions, but I feel like that is a that is a girl thing, where they're always cold. You know, as soon as you said that, I pictured five of my uh, female friends yeah. who are constantly cold. They're always, like, and I'll always say, take a jacket, yeah. take a jacket, and when they don't and they're cold, yeah. I say they, now I'm just talking about everyone I've ever dated. Uh, yeah, oh, it, it drives, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Like... Well, you're sleeping alongside uh, women who are cold and you're overheating. It yes. can be a disaster. Yes. So we've got the, I have a fan on my side of the bed. Right. And she sleeps in another room. That's all. <laughs> right, yeah. And that's the best way to make it work. We have a cat now. So he, he sits on her head and sort of warms her up. Right. Uh, but yeah, I'm always hot. Yeah. Always. Yeah. The, the weather here in Sydney, in, uh, has, it's been really full on, hasn't it's it? There's nothing worse than that sensation of, and I know some people who love it, but I, like when I swear, I oh, want it wet to neck? drip off. I yeah. just want it to go. Yeah. But it just sticks around the neck and yep. you just feel a bit, whew, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm running up a massive electricity bill by having my air conditioning on. Totally. Just, I, I try to do it in bursts to get that yep, out, yep. but, oh, man. Because my, uh, my girlfriend's a dancer, well, she's a professional dancer. And right. So she loves sweat and it doesn't bother her, it doesn't gross her out. And I yeah. mean, you know, it's our body's way of cooling down. Yeah, it means your skin's working. Exactly. Um, but yeah, oh, she's always cold and loves sweat and I'm always hot and I hate sweat. Yeah. Hate it. Yeah. Also, we're, we're bespectacled guys. You exactly. Know? So yeah, I know. It doesn't take long for us no. to, you know, be walking down the street and then suddenly it's like the Doris Day effect. You know, your glasses are smeared totally. and everything just looks a bit hazy. When I um when I turned 13, I had my bar mitzvah. I was like, right, all this free money is sick, but I'm barely a Jew. And now I'm turning 29. Like, I've got glasses. I have asthma. I need to take, like, 40 different kinds of medication. My hair's just started curling. Right. I'm like, holy shit. It's happening. I'm turning into my worst nightmare. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's how they get in. They get, it's, just a, it's just a simple bar mitzvah. And then over time, you start kvetching and it's all over. I should have never got but that circumcision. Yes. Well, you know, uh, it's, uh, it comes in handy if you... Uh, uh, don't want to catch uh, as many diseases and also uh, if you want to last longer in sex. Oh, yeah, but the lasting longer is ridiculous. Like, I can never finish. <laughs> it's oh, like, right, yeah. There's, oh, man. It's so, I remember growing up because before I, like, you know, going to a Jewish school, I didn't really know much about 
uh, not being Jewish. Right. But I used to go to a lot of performing arts schools, so I had a lot of friends that were Christian, but we didn't talk about our dicks, believe it or not. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is going to come as a massive shock to people, but a lot of guys don't talk about their penises. Right. So, you know, in movies I'd seen, I always heard about premature ejaculation, this, this, right. this. And I can't even imagine that. Mm. Because it's so... You'd be wrapped. I r- read something the other day that apparently circumcised guys are 60% less sensitive. Yeah. And I was just thinking about all the times where I've gotten to the finish line and then added 60% onto that. Oh, my right. God. Why yeah. would you leave the house? Right. <laughs> That's, That's what I call I my girlfriend's <laughs> vagina. Uh, what's a bar mitzvah like? Like a, oh, as someone who's never experienced <laughs> it, is it a bit overwhelming to have the, a lot of attention? It's or? the best thing ever. Right. It, like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was amazing. It's because I've, I had a pretty big 21st and that my 21st came close, but it wasn't my bar mitzvah. Oh really? Like the bar mitzvah was better than the 21st? Yeah. I had a but you can drink at the 21st. Y- you can also at the bar mitzvah. Can you? Well, you can, you can, right. you shouldn't, but you can. Right. The bar mitzvahs I went to got crazy because it was around that age when hormones were kicking in. Yeah. So there was always like, you know, some Sarah or Vera getting fingered over the basin. Right. Uh, and some crazy kids, I remember they'd take the cutlery and jam them down the toilets or they'd tie them to the helium balloons and like let them out the window. Right. Crazy shit. Right. Um, but yeah, I had a, I had a pretty, a pretty big bar mitzvah. I had a... A daytime, like a brunch luncheon with um, everyone I hated or that was over 30. So it was all, but it was sick. Like all my great grandparents' friends that I'd never met just giving me all this money. I was like, thank you so much. Right. Insert name. Uh, and then <laughs> all the oldies, oh, and we did speeches and shit. And then yeah. all the oldies left. And I had a DJ. Really? A magician. No. Like breakdance teachers and an ice cream buffet. Oh, no, you're right. That's heaps better than your 21st. Oh, and man. I don't even know what happened at your 21st. My 21st was really... Did not have a magician. My 21st do- did have three DJs. I had right. three levels. So I just got hookups. Right. I, the place I worked, I um had two friends that were DJs. Okay, but where did you work? Uh, just at this... um, It was like an odds and ends homewares shop right. called Hart and Heim. It was the best. If you like... If you like really odd homewares, it was yep. really... And they sold a lot of Japanese vinyls, and I right. used to be really into collecting those. Yeah. Um, so I had DJs at the party, and one of the one of the DJs, his girlfriend was best friends with a lot of the models from Next Top Model of that season. Right. So I had models there, and it was, cra- it was crazy. Right. It was so crazy. But it, there wasn't an ice cream machine. There wasn't a magician. There weren't no, breakdowns No, there was... There was 300 jelly shots, really? thanks to my mum. Oh. Uh, How does that make you feel now? Like when I hear about, you know, when you're at the time, you're like, let's go crazy. And now I hear things like that and I go, oh my God, I would be in the hospital for two days. I'm still at the age where I want to go crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know when it will end. Uh, l- close to your late 30s, because if, if, if you're lucky. I feel like my body's ending already. My body just wants me to stop everything. Right. But my brain just wants to go crazy. Yeah. You know, it, it really gets to a point where uh, someone during the comedy fest, uh, during the Adelaide Fringe, who had a, um, and she's my age, uh, which is 44, and she had a cannabis capsule. Oh. And she said, and I was like, oh, like, what is that? And she said, it'll just be like a really full on, you know cannabis experience and yeah. I was like that just sounds like the worst and she was like oh what's happened to you I said I'm 44 she said well I'm 44 and I'm like yeah like what are you doing <laughs> like that seems uh, you just take Casual. too long to bounce back that's so strange like you'd obviously shelve it but what happens uh, is that why it's called the shelf by the way was that Adam's idea uh, that was very much uh, it was a two prong thing it was okay. top shelf comedy yeah, and we get to call because uh, we sell season tickets, and there's people who come uh, all the time. We call them frequent shelvers. Gotcha. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. So it was always one of those jokes that if you got it, it was there, mm-hmm. and for the majority of people, they did not know what we were talking about. Because I was just thinking, like, all shelving is a two pronged attack, right? Unless you, anyway. Um, yeah, I've 
this is the first time I... What was I talking about? Uh, we were talking about the 300 jelly shots. Oh, that yeah, you, that. Your um, lovely mum sorted out. I, it had a, a basic... Okay, so I'm... I like to be a good host at parties. Yeah. So I went, you know what? I'm not going to drink tonight. I had a uh, girlfriend at the time, a uh, long-term girlfriend. Didn't really like her very much. So we spent... Hang on. So w- wait a minute. You, ha- you, you can't just say you had a long-term girlfriend that you didn't like very much. Mm. What, 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 like, was it just at the end of the relationship? Is that what you mean? Like you'd had your fun and now you're young, you don't know how to break up? Well, when we first started dating, I was like, this is the girl I'm going to ruin the rest of my life with. Right, Jesus. But right, I, I would personally get out of that relationship before <laughs> I started. She was just yucky. We went to uni together, so we were bound. And my singing teacher was like, don't shit where you eat. Uh, but he was fucking all the students. Right. He wasn't really. Um, well, at least he didn't name him. No. <laughs> oh, Greg McDonald. <laughs> that was the most like, just generic name I could come yeah, up with. Yeah, no, it was good. It was a horrible relationship. Of course, that person's now going to get in touch with us. I was never a teacher. <laughs> You're sued. We just spent a lot of time apart at that party. Right. Um, it's so strange, though. There's this photo of me and a bunch of girls, and I, su- I without even thinking, I've dated every single one of them since right. my 21st. Wow. And the girl that I've been dating now for two and a half years was also in that photo. Right. It was like this weird... Are they all fine with it? It was like death note, but right. like <laughs> fuck note. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you had some man whore issues going yeah, on. Yeah. W- or did you actually date them? Yeah. Like, right. I'm, a, I'm a long-term relationship guy. Right. It's just, it's their problem if they're not. But at this party, it so ended... So you're a serial monogamous. Serial monogamous. Who doesn't look too far out of his own sphere. Well, uh, well... Mm, uh, you, you're 29. Uh, how many girls were in this photo? Six. Right. And you've dated all of them. Yeah. And for uh, at least a little while. At least a month. Right. Well, that's I'm not dating. No, well, 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 that's dating. That's not a relationship. It's not a relationship, but it, if it continues, like it's... It can turn into a, like yes. a friendship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be a friendship that you give it a go for a while and then you go, ah, not so yeah. much. And then... Yeah. I agree. So it was like, it was a hump bump. But the party was pretty tame, and then it hit, like, midnight, and most of the people were there. I had plus ones, too, at this. Like, I tried to make it like a party. Right. Uh, and then I had about 20 jelly shots, and I sculled some punch, and this, that, and the other. And then I greened out with some of my 15-year-old friends. I'd sold one <laughs> of them my bong. No, really? And then um, my girlfriend at the time was uh, giving me a special kiss, and mum's, like, best friend walked into the room. And then the, the last thing I remember was throwing up on my best friend at the time, who's yeah. now the lead in Kinky Boots, so there you go. Right. Well, yeah. you gave him, you, you gave him the, 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 the... My Jared vomit bump. takes people yeah. to great places. <laughs> yeah. So when, uh, when was your first interest in uh, comedy uh, kind of noticeable? Was it something that's always been there when you were a kid? Like specifically to do stand-up? No, 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 no just your interest yeah. in comedy. I wanted to be a professional clown magician when I was about five. Oh, right. That's yeah. the right time to I've think of it. I've always been obsessed with yeah. everything comedic. So what was, what was the first thing that you saw? Like Circus, yeah. I think. Yeah, one of those animal abusey ones. Right. Uh, the Moscow Circus. Right. That was the one. One of my favourite animal abusey ones. Yeah. They feed the lions vodka. Right. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I don't... They're so, what, tame and uh, good at speaking to the KGB? Very, very good at the KGB. They're communist lions. <laughs> <laughs> they like the colour red because yeah. they eat blood. Right. Just like the Russians and the Chinese. Right. I once caught a flight to China, to China, from China, and there was a couple in front of me, a Russian woman and a Chinese man, and Mm. I believe they were married, and it was just like super communism, and they were both speaking Russian, and it was really intense. Right. Uh, Yeah, I've always, I caught the uh, comedy bug when I was quite young. Yeah. Yeah, I've... I mean, I see you've got a Marx Brothers Oh, yeah. Poster. I, I love all of the classics. I'm a diehard for the classics. Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. I love Jacques Tati. I yeah. don't know. 
he, oh my, when I discovered him, I was like, oh, hold up. This guy deserves so much credit that he doesn't get. Yeah. I mean, he was the template for Jacques Clouseau from Pink Panther. Yeah. And Mr. Bean. And you see it all the time. All the time. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm friends with uh, Meow Meow. Oh, and yeah. And she's a massive fan. Yeah. And, Meow uh, Meow is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Where? she is. Like, you know, she she has something... She, she is properly charismatic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I studied music theatre and I was I write cabarets for people and stuff and right. big fan of the Meow Meow. Yeah. Uh, we're, on fa- we're Facebook friends, but I've never met her. It was one of those early Facebook moments where I just added everyone in my, in yeah. my circles. Um, Have you ever done the... Uh, I've done the ad to the wrong... You know, someone who's got the same name. Oh, and yeah. Comes up and you go, oh, it's such and such. And then you have... Then you have contact, and then halfway through the contact, you go, oh, you are not the person. You are not the person. I really should have looked closer at that photo. I once had this guy add me um, from Korea, and I just got an inbox for him uh, approving my order of, like, five kilos of tofu. Great. It was so strange. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, there is not a classic, like, comic that I don't love. Yeah. Lo- um, uh, the Marx Brothers still holds up as well. I oh reckon. yeah, like I was, uh, I watched um, Duck Soup. Oh, I was going to say Duck Soup. Fuck, it's so amazing. Suit. It's amazing. The uh, the the scene where they're all dressed up as Groucho. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, that it's is so funny. Like the it's 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 that joy that you get from the surrealness of uh, Warner Brothers cartoons. Yeah. Well, exactly. You know, it's I'm a huge fan, like Tex Avery, all that stuff. You, f- you feel like, do you, you feel like they can, we can do that kind of surreal humor now. It, it, it's a bit harder, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. there's too much of a sense of irony and too much yeah. of a sense of knowledge. Yeah. Although do you watch Atlanta? No, I cannot wait to see it. Oh uh, man. It's on SBS Viceland. You can watch it. All 10 episodes are there. I've heard it's like Twin Peaks meets Atlanta because well, I'm I'm a huge hip hop guy and I yeah. love ATL hip hop so yeah. I think I'll love it on a whole new level. Well, there is there is some moments like it's so grounded in what the characters experience. Yeah, but there are some pretty surreal moments mm-hmm. that really yeah take you out of it yeah. and w- in a, in a really great way. Yeah, but um, I, I feel like I feel like there's too much of a sense of like we're I don't know we're post irony or something mm. or and, 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 and I know what you mean. It's things need to be explained or you know once upon a time you just accepted yeah that Wiley e. Coyote will yeah paint a, uh, a a tunnel yeah and the Roadrunner will run through it and then he'll try to run through it and he'll run into the mountain and then while he's head spinning yeah a truck will come from the other side yeah. and run him over. You just accept it because that's. That's the world that he lives in. Well, we still use that comedy, but it's all like appropriation. I right. mean, I'm a huge SpongeBob fan. Yeah, yeah. So I still watch, I'm still a huge SpongeBob diehard. And I, I mean, it, it sort of carries over that. Because Nickelodeon, I mean, you know, Nickelodeon has a history with like Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. And SpongeBob. And I love, I still. love, I love cartoons because comedic cartoons, like there's nothing they can't do. Right. And we can't achieve like any of that in live action other than those weird. I mean, like the remake of The Three Stooges. Did you see that Three Stooges no. movie? That was appalling. And it was right. made by the Farrelly brothers. And, uh, you know, they have made some very, very funny films. Yeah, uh, but that's what was still, strange. Still the one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a movie is Jeff Daniels copping Lauren Holly yeah. with a snowball yeah. from a metre away yeah. in the face. Yeah. Like, fuck. Yeah, I nearly <laughs> popped a kidney when I saw that. That was one of the funniest things. But Three Stooges, it's like a family movie. So they had right. to... And it's just, it's slapstick without the sort of grotesque slapstick that we're used to with their movies. Right, yeah. At, oh, it was, and it had such a good cast. It had um, uh, Will Sasso and, uh, what's his name? Jack McFarlane from Will and Grace. Oh, right. Sean Hayes. Right. Yeah, it was so good. It was such a good cast, but it was terrible. I watched yeah. it on a on a plane too, yeah. and I was like, I hope this. Man, plane when goes your expectations down. are down, because you're yeah, just exactly. happy to be entertained. Exactly. Uh, that's disappointing, isn't it? I'm always I'm I, I like, uh, I like to like things, and mm. I know that sounds like no something I, that, but you know, so I lots know of exactly people what just, you mean. I actually cop shit from it. Like mm. sometimes I like something, and I'm like, oh yeah, well you like things. That's like, oh sorry. So I'm always disappointed when I watch something and I yeah, don't get yeah. into it. I, ha- uh, yeah, 
Totally. I know what you mean. Yeah. I'm really excited to see Skull Island. Have you seen that yet? The oh, new Kong movie? Yeah, yeah. You saw it? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, it was fun. I'm so excited. And, 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 and um, a, l- a little bit cheekily subversive yeah. and knowing. I think yeah. that's the best thing. Yeah. It's knowing it's of knowing, what it right. is and what it's doing. Because I'm a huge fan of the old Godzilla movies and like KG right. in general. Yeah. So when I saw the trailer and realized there's all these different monsters, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, and John C. Riley is fantastic. Because I I heard something in the works that they are going to do a King Kong vs. Godzilla movie. At oh, some this point. fits into the Godzilla. Universe. I figured everything's yeah. a universe oh now. God. Like I know everything has like it's funny when you uh, when you came in and you were saying you're a DC guy and you were saying you're not a Marvel guy and that and um, like how much has entertainment changed since Iron Man? Like it mm, has, mm, mm, mm. it has been a significant seismic shift. Yep, yep. Iron Man changed everything. Yeah, and yeah. you know what they essentially did was copied the template for Batman Begins. Yes, and then, <sighs> but then knew how to put it into a, mm, mm. A, a broader context. Whereas Nolan went and made his masterpiece, and then yep. DC of like, yeah, I saw that there was a teaser trailer for JLA this yep, morning, yep. and I just like I, yeah, it's I just don't care. I bought a um, DC encyclopedia once mm. and like a week later the new edition came out. I was so mad. Yeah. But y- I'm looking through and it's amazing how um, how back and forth DC and Marvel went with their characters. Yeah. You know, like um, uh, Mr. Fantastic and then DC had Mr. Stretch. Oh, yeah. Or Mr. Elasto. Yeah. Something. And, um, well, the Doom Patrol and the X-Men came out within a month yeah, of each other. exactly. Misfits led by a dude in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like they, what are um, the odds? Because Marvel, I think, had a character really early on called, like, Mr. Marvel. Uh, and DC had, like, this character who was almost identical back when they were um, Detective Comics. Right. Uh, yeah, it gets really confusing, doesn't it? I can't think who Mr. Marvel is. And they all have a tornado guy, like Red Tornado, and then there's also, um... uh, I've gone blank. I haven't... I haven't indulged as much lately as I used to. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. With my graphic novels, but I have always very passionate memories. I I have a, uh... Like I, I've gotten to the point now where my, my friends have some uh, great kids and I have a disposable income and yeah. I read way too much and I just send it all down to the kids. Yeah. Like uh, just before you came here today, yeah. I just sent a box full of oh comics wow. that those kids are going to open That's up and awesome. go, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I mean, I didn't get so deep into the collection where I started becoming a little bit more blase but mine are all still like in you know plastic and i pick them out with toys as like the yeah whole. right yeah i have a problem no what well that's it's the collector's mentality isn't it my um copy of watchman is like in like 40 pieces of plastic because when i finished reading it i was like that was the best thing i ever experienced yeah did you read it as a graphic novel yeah 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 man i i read it monthly yeah yeah uh, oh. I've, I've got those original issues and it was if I remember correctly, it was three months between issues eleven mm-hmm. and twelve. Like, can you imagine finishing on that cliffhanger? But that's it, it's I great. like that. Yeah, you so know? do I. I still um on Netflix say when a whole you know they drop a whole season at once. Yeah, I'll still watch only one episode a week. Oh, because I miss I miss that you know that. Uh, it depends on depends on the series. If I love the series, I watch one a week because I like to have that time to think about totally. it. Totally, I want to have time to. Whether it was uh, the the joy of watching Lost week to week, or even something like Mad Men, which is so different, I want to have time to think about those characters that mm-hmm. I love and what might happen, and then I don't need to be right. Yeah, I just get to see. I mean, I've seen you know, like with Black Mirror, say, oh, like yeah. the episode I just watched was an hour and a half, and yeah. that's a movie. Yeah. So is that the last one of season? No, three? I've only watched like six episodes thus oh, far. Yeah. This was the one about um, oh, Christmas. Hated in the Nation with the bees. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was so cool. Yeah. But I mean, some, you know, like episodes... Yeah, that's the last episode of the latest oh, season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Ep- uh, you know, Breaking Bad, like, some episodes were an hour. And I'm like, that's almost a movie. Yeah. And it looks and feels like a movie. Yeah. So I don't want to then just go, fuck that and move on. Like, no, I want to no, no, appreciate agree. it. If I love it, I want to have time yeah. to dwell on it. And then I'll get to the... 
next episode and I'll but if it's a series that I enjoy enough yeah, yeah. If I'll, I'll just turn through three or if four it's a mini series or something I like uh, my girlfriend and I just watched the OA have you seen that yeah did you watch all of it yeah did you enjoy it no no you I, hated I, it? I have had the, I, I I am by the way this has been an ongoing conversation Adam Richard loved it Okay. Uh, my friend Hannah Norris loved it. I know lots of people who loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I love that it exists. Yeah. I yep. I thought it looked amazing. Yep. I found her to be incredibly charismatic. Yep. I yep. found her to be really watchable. Yeah. I was really intrigued by the fact that episode seven and eight were only like half an hour and forty minutes. Yeah. I like that as a storytelling technique. What about but the first episode? It took like forty minutes before oh, and then the, the credits opening. come up. And and then you see Russia, and it was a totally different show. Right. And I, and I love that. That blew my mind, because I kind of hated it until that bit happened. Right. But the aggressive Tai Chi. Oh, see, that's my favourite bit. I, that is such a pivotal spot. I love that it exists. Yeah. I love that they did that. Yeah. I personally found it really embarrassing. Because my girlfriend's a dancer, and I used to be a dancer many yeah. years ago. I love... It was like... To me, it was like amazing contemporary dancing. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think it, it started so off... Cool. Like, I think I've read that it started off as a dance. Yeah. Well but, I, by the way, I can't remember the last time I watched something that I didn't really enjoy all the way to the end. Okay. But, so, so I... That's what I mean. It's one of those series where I go, I love that it was made. I love that people are yeah, into it. Yeah. But I've got to be honest, it did not work for me. And I thought the storytelling was really poor. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, like I to- I didn't I love the it. ending. I didn't I love it, it at all. Yeah, the the but ending I found to be yeah. like, and my friend Hannah has said, uh, you know, because that's the the world that they live in. Those things happen. Mm-hmm. But like, see, I I loved Westworld. Yeah, and I kept away from you know it was really hard. But you know, because of the hive mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you tell a story correctly, yeah. everyone can get together and they can work out totally. some beats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe they were trying to avoid that, but you know that that shooting yeah yeah felt on the nose to me. My girlfriend, I'm just going to call her Carly because I keep saying my girlfriend, and mm. uh, she had the craziest theory about the end. Oh yeah, she's like, oh, you know what's going to happen, and I was like, yeah, and then she just she told me that um, she thinks that the shooter mm. was like. Um, the doctor and he'd like sort of astral projected into that body as a means to track down the OA and kill her. You and know, I was like, what? Yeah, but you know what? Like with the way they tell the story, mm. like maybe that maybe she's right. Yeah. Because there's yeah. no there's no way that you would think that no. all the way through the no, series. No. So she's probably on the money. I, I mean I'm compelled to watch <laughs> season two. Because I probably I, will too. I'm didn't hate it, but you liked Westworld? I loved Westworld. Oh my God, that was such a ride. Yeah. Oh, my God. I loved everything about it. I love, I mean, I love Michael Crichton. And yeah. to have this, like, Western sci-fi. And you would have seen the first movie. I haven't. Oh, I yeah. have it taped. Um, I'm dying to see it. I watched the trailer, and it seems so much like how there's also, like, China world. There's, like, Asia yeah, world or something. There's future world. Future world. You know, I, I loved it so much as a kid. Yeah. And... You know how there's that. Sometimes you go back and you watch something. And you go, "Oh my god, I can see exactly why I love that." Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you can go back and go, "Well, I'm glad I loved it back then, but that has fucking struggled now." Yeah, 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 yeah. I really want to read the Jurassic Park novels. Right. I, I mean, when I found out that Michael Crichton made Westworld and Jurassic Park, yeah. I was like, "Oh, I get it. This guy he loves like biomechanics and stuff." Yeah. And that's so amazing. That really interests me. Also, ER. Also, ER. Yeah, you know, know like, isn't that crazy? And the Andromeda strain. That yeah. guy was all over it. Yeah. He's dead now. So. Yeah. But his work lives on. Oh yeah, his work like really lives on. Yeah, but it's um, it's it's interesting. Like I, I, I love the 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 breadth of choice and. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it also just means, you know, sometimes you're just going to watch something and just go, no. Did actually, I feel a bit... I would pr- would have preferred to have actually really hated the OA mm-hmm. so I didn't bother to watch of course. another se- seven or eight episodes. I didn't like um, in the OA that sort of like limbo that they'd go to. Right. Uh, looked like they were sitting in a kaleidoscope. But that woman 
uh, yeah. Catan or something. Yeah. She bothered me. Right. She, it was so, it was so, like, there was elements of the show that was really naff. Yeah. But that sort of out-naffed the naff. Right. Yeah. I was like, who is this weird gypsy lady? See, it, you know, uh, I'm I'm a massive fan of, and I, uh, of The Leftovers. Mm-hmm. And I feel like The Leftovers touches on a lot of those things yeah. that the OA touches on s- spiritually. Yeah. But I think The Leftovers is a masterpiece. I haven't seen it, but I've only heard good things about it. There's about seven people who watch it. Yeah. But it's we about all love it. um, <laughs> cold pizza, right? It's about cold pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when did you uh, when did you think so you, you've studied all these different types of art forms yeah people say I'm very talented do they I hate it do they, they yeah they actually do right, and it always okay. drives me crazy I'm like I hope so like my parents and I have spent thousands of dollars like I my entire life I've been studying weird skills like right. I fucking hope so I didn't just have these skills you know what you uh (laughs) what so do you sometimes think so i've got a friend who is pound for pound the most talented person i know Mm -hmm. writes draws can act yeah uh played uh uh, top end sport Mm -hmm. won championships oh wow played for australia people that are sporty and creative oh oh yeah man an an incredible illustrator like this is a guy who won two nbl championships played for australia and see that that's a that's an old that's from back 1995 when he drew that but that oh the caricature the, like he did that you know and sometimes we've always tried to do some projects together and it's hard to pin him down mm. and I sometimes think maybe he has too many options yeah and do you find that with all the skills that you have sometimes you have too many <laughs> options to to know what to yeah focus well, in on. My the show I'm doing at the moment is my third solo show, and every show I go, when am I going to incorporate juggling and tap dancing? Because right. I actually can do both. Right. And I'm like, I always think about the man with two brains that. Um, oh yeah, that's when one he gets of the pulled brainers. over for drunk driving, <laughs> yes. and, and he juggles and tap dances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what a great so film, by the way. Ipso oh, facto, quarters interrupt us. It's a citizen's <laughs> divorce. Like it's great. Yeah, I so I don't know. I mean, my new show has. One liners, live looping, beat uh, proper beats produced where I do rap stuff. There's a lap dance. There's magic tricks. Right. Um, like I try and do like a variety show without it being wanky. That's right. kind of like my goal. Yeah. Because I'm a I'm a circus guy. I'm a vaudeville guy. Like I fucking love it. I, yeah. I mean, I've never met Asher Trelevin, but I feel like we'd get along like House on Fire. Or you'd hate each other. Or we'd hate each other. You, you'd, you'd either connect or yeah. repel. Yeah. Nah, Asher's great. Asher gave me the term panic erection, which is one of my favourite two words, and I always give him respect any time I use it. What does that mean? Well, we happened to be in the same session down in Melbourne, IMAX, which is like seven storeys high of the movie Gravity in 3D. Oh. And I saw him afterwards, Uh and we were both gushing about it, and Uh I said to him, my jaw's really sore, because I thought I was dealing with it quite well, and then at the end when I went to speak to my friends, I was like, oh, my God. I must have been really grinding all the way through it. Yeah, and wow. and he said to me <laughs> that missing beat, he said, Yeah, that movie gave me a panic erection. And I think I laughed so hard and for so long. I said, Do you mind if I use those words and always give you a bit of respect for it? He went, No, go ahead. Is it a bit anxiety inducing? I haven't seen it. Oh, you haven't seen Gravity? Is it good? Oh, Did you man. like it? It's 90 minutes of joy. Like it's okay. it's 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 okay. a it's a roller coaster ride. And yeah, okay. Sandra Bullock is fantastic. Yeah, and I've always liked it. The special her. effects are fantastic and is it better than Miss Congeniality 2? Nothing's better than okay. Miss Congeniality 2. <laughs> I can't even believe you'd ask. When they did Proud Mary, oh man, at that drag club, that was that was a great moment. That was something, right? Yeah. Uh, I really want to see Gravity. I saw that you have a rival over there. Oh, yeah. Did you? I'm assuming you liked that if you purchased it? Oh, yeah. If I oh. like something, I buy it on oh, Blu-ray. Oh, man, that movie was so good. I was glued. Nothing better than getting to the end of a movie you're really enjoying and then yeah. they give you a key to enjoy it in a yeah. completely different yeah. way. Oh my goodness! I looked. Uh, I did a lot of research on like determinism after that. Yeah. And linguistic. I can't yeah. remember what it's called, but oh my god, it's so interesting. Yeah. And how the like one one of those great dipstick Oscar moments yeah. where yeah. a movie gets all these nominations, yeah. but the person who holds it together yeah. doesn't get nominated. I know. Like, Tell Amy me about Adams it. is fucking spectacular in it. She 
is such a diverse actress. Like, it right. blows my mind. Right. The first thing I saw her in was Enchanted, the right. Disney, the live action Disney movie. Yeah. Oh my God, she's got such range. Like, I'd never know, but right. I've seen so many things that she's been in. And she's, and she's, been she's great. incredible. She's grounded. She's really so grounded. Even when, when the fantastic is going on around her, there's mm-hmm. something very relatable about what she's doing within that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really captivating. But, and but that to me is like, you know, Driving Miss Daisy getting all those nominations. Totally. Bruce Beresford doesn't get nominated. Totally. It's like, like it, it, it actually makes no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, I've, I've been really wrapped with sci-fi mm-hmm. movies for, for a number of years now. It's uh, I feel like we're in a really good era. And totally. Oh, you, you know what's been getting good reviews, which mm. I have, which to be honest, I saw the trailer and I went, eh, at, was Life. I was going to say, you're talking about Life. I Lots of people giving it really good reviews. I'm a like diehard Alien fan, and I oh, feel like yeah. it's sort of like an, a different angle on Alien. Well, you know, I'm I'm with you, and th- that's why I was a little bit like, you know, you, th- th- it's a bit of a shitty trailer yep, to yep. be honest. If you, where you're just going, oh, seen it, yeah, and yep. uh, but then, you know, b- by the way, when I say it's getting good reviews, I, I haven't like I d- I don't read them, but you can't help but see on your feed, yeah, and it yep. it seems like in the the heading, it seems like everyone's surprised mm-hmm. uh, but what i read was that uh, the director writer wanted to uh make a more realistic version mm-hmm. of i'm alien gonna as such. i'm definitely but also you know I'll that's a big 70s movie so it's a little bit retro alien yeah but i saw it um last year at the movies alien and uh, boy did i get when hot under the collar it was wow oh yeah it was a george street cinema they do that oh, in the house yeah, the yeah. They, Oh I must. Uh, God, I saw it last good. year at the cinema as well, but they did a session down in. Uh, oh no, maybe it was two years ago in Melbourne when Tom Skerritt turned oh, up. Oh wow! Yeah, Tom cool. Skerritt, who's like eighty something, yeah, yeah. talking about his five-year-old child, which yeah. kind of everyone kind of cheered, and then you could also then s- hear, "Oh, I've got a five-year-old boy," and everyone, "Yay!" And then you could feel everyone collectively do the maths and, oh, and get yeah, a yeah, bit totally. Weirder. But he j- he jumped off the stage. Oh wow! It's like you know, like. Wow, he's eighty, and he's yeah, jumped yeah, off the yeah. stage, and you go, "Fuck, this guy is spry." I mean, but the Alien on the big screen, the concept is of Alien, anything. like, absolutely blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, oh my, it's what's, it, what's your relationship with Prometheus? I loved. I like. I feel like I go out of my way to not dislike anything in that universe. Yeah. Alien vs Predator obviously is well, is that, they don't quite count. Do it's they? fucking schlock. It reminds yeah. me of like when you watch the Mortal Kombat movies again. It feels yeah. like that. But <laughs> Wayland Utani, diehard fan. Yeah. That whole universe. Oh, it's just something so interesting about it. A- the fact that in Alien, you know, it's they wake up and they don't know why, and mm. oh, the whole. And I saw. Um, and then the the con- you know the that that just that uh, just that very vague conspiracy. Of yeah, if yeah, we yeah. Find something that we can use as a weapon. Exactly. You guys are expendable. Kind exactly. Of thing yeah. Is something else. I mean, there's. I was always a. Huge Freddy Krueger guy. Oh yeah! But after rewatching Alien, the Xenomorph's favorite villain by far. Right. They're s- they're so dangerous. Like they're yeah. so dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I think um I, I think there's a lot to like about Prometheus, but they get they get some fundamentals wrong, and it's mm. not the fundamentals of the Alien universe. Yeah. They get some fundamentals and storytelling wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because you set up. Uh, I think the the best example that I there was some flaws. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the two guys who are quite clearly scared. Yep. who then come, who then, you know, 15 minutes later, find some serpent with a mouth in front mm, of them and yep. the guy's leaning forward going, it's beautiful. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm. They've been scared. Yeah, They yeah, should yeah. still be scared. They should Th- still they're be the scared. bits that you have to get right. Definitely. For us to accept the fantastic. But I loved the, the, uh, that opening sequence is oh, yeah. mind-blowing. Incredible. And uh, I, you know what I wish the film was? That opening sequence and then Michael Fassbender by himself for the whole movie yep. going to another planet. Yeah, and finding things. Well, I just can't wait for him to win back my trust in Covenant because I saw Assassin's Creed. Oh, that did not look great. That was, oh man. Yeah. Mm, Carly, my yep. girlfriend, <laughs> is the biggest like Assassin's Creed fan I know. She's oh, played right. every game as it's come right. out, and you know she's really into the conspiracies of the Illuminati, that yep. whole shablam. And she was so excited before we saw the movie. Yeah. And she wanted to know if it was about Ezio, who was the first assassin in the series. And I googled Assassin's Creed, and the first thing that comes up now is like reviews, and you know it comes up articles. Yeah. And it just said 
Assassin's Creed, uh, I predicted to already be the worst movie of 2017. She's like, is it Ezio? And I was like, no. I didn't want to get her hopes yeah. hopes, hopes down. Yeah. But we went and saw it, and about halfway in, she just looked at me, and it looked like a part of her died. No, oh, that's... It was it was sh- it was shocking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to have such a great cast: Michael, uh, Marion Cotillard, Cotillard, yeah, Jeremy Irons. It and was it was the worst like showcase of their acting well, you ever. Know, you know, also what makes me a bit sad is in the it wasn't an Australian guy who directed it as well. He hadn't ever directed a feature film before. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, yeah, and Australian. Yeah, yeah he was. Y- you know what makes me sad is that the. The interviews in the lead up to mm. that movie, and similarly with uh, uh, Duncan Jones' Warcraft. Yeah, like r- real fans. Uh, Duncan I Jones is a good director. Oh, you like Warcraft? I loved Warcraft. Oh, did you? Oh, that's so great. Much. I just didn't quite get it. I'm not saying it's a bad film. I just didn't quite get it, and I feel like it's because I'm not a video game guy. It was only a few years before that that I got into um, Blizzard games. Right. Like I played Diablo two, right? Three, sorry, on the I'd never, ever played one of those top-down RPGs before. Right. So it was a long time coming. Uh, I played it. I played it on the hardest level. Right. Um, where you can't die. If you die once, you have to start the entire game again. And I finished the whole thing in oh two really? weeks. And Did I'd never felt so cocksure in my life. <laughs> right. Um, it was fucking amazing. And then I... I well, part of the reason I don't get into video games is, as you can see, I'm into enough stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I like, used to divide my time before between graphic novels and gaming because I feel yeah. like I can't do two at once. But I spent my whole life feeling really irked out by fantasy and sci-fi. Right. And then I slowly started to um, hone my inner nerd and now like it makes me drool. Yeah, right. And I never knew this was going to happen. Right. And oh my goodness me. So so why were you worked out by? I don't know. I think I don't, I've always had this weird mix of people assume I'm a cool guy, but then I don't I don't know what it was. By I don't the know way, what it was. I, like for for people at home, I I, I love that because you're wearing a Daffy Duck t-shirt yeah. and you have camouflage. Is that a camouflage? Sneakers? Oh, no, they're Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise, sorry. And you've got (laughs) a SpongeBob bag. And I love that. Yeah. Because once upon a time, there is no way you could have said that. No. (laughs) Yeah. So that that to me is progress. I think it's my, like, I really love hip-hop. And hip-hop's always been really into embracing pop culture. Yeah, right. And sort of weird shit. Like, so many rappers love video games and um, graphic novels. Like, stoners liking video games and graphic novels. That blows my mind. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I I, mean, Carly is such a big nerd. Right. And that's so hot to me. Yeah. Because she, like, you'd think that she is really cool, but you'd go, oh, she's a classic cool chick. Right. And then, you know, she just froths at the nerdiest things. Yeah. And it's it's so the best. But when I was a teenager, sometimes my, you know, my girlfriends at the time or that would come into comic shops yeah. and it would be awkward. Yeah. Because guys would be like, There'd be the guys who would be like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Yeah. There's a girl here. And there'd be some, you know, and these guys still exist, unfortunately. Yeah. The guys who'd be like, oh, what's she doing here? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. This our place. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're a lonely motherfucker. Aren't totally. You? Yeah. Yeah. But, I, like, I, but is, I, I think it's so much better the world we live in. Like, I think oh, it's great that yeah. we can be like this now. I know some people that hate the whole geek chic thing. They're like, I got bullied my whole life and now it's cool. And I'm like, just focus on the fact that now it's cool. Oh yeah, like I uh, yeah. Without Who a didn't doubt, get bullied I, in some capacity. I, I I enjoy the confusion I get when I'm like you know talking to someone who's an athlete yeah. who will then say to me, you know, what was wrong with the Andrew Garfield Spider Man movies? Yeah, he never said with great power comes great responsibility. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. How the fuck do you know that? Yeah, <laughs> like that yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. that was that was our thing. But I I'm not offended by it. But Mm-mm. you just sit there going. Okay, Mm-mm. no worries. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I thought you pigeonhole yourself. Like, I thought we've all picked our archetypes. Yeah, but you know, like it's like I can I can rattle off sports, yeah, uh, total stats see, and things like that. We, we, we've always we've always gone in that direction, mm-hmm. but it's just funny that it's also coming back in our direction. I have no idea about sport. 
my dad is like typical Aussie bloke. Oh, really? Like you, you see him and you're like, oh, that guy would hate gay black people. Do you know what I mean? Oh, really? Just yeah. like your classic ho- poster boy for homophobic racism. Right. But he's, not, he's, he's not at all. No. But he didn't like, he didn't like it very much when I was a goth. He thought it was a bit, let's say, faggy because I'd wear the eyeliner and black oh, nails. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what's your dad's background? Uh, just being a hard cunt. Basically. Right. <laughs> well, he he his parents are Ge- his parents are German, and right. he was adopted into another German family. He's just had a very German upbringing. Right. And he works in sales, and you know he spent his whole life sort of doing trade shows and pa- being in warehouses. Yeah. Uh, and just loves sport. Like yeah. He loves it. Yeah. What well, and what what sport? Footy. Rugby. Your rugby. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh. Oh, like loves it. Yeah. Is this, is this, now I'm going to ask you, and I could be incorrect about this, mm. but in Melbourne and Adelaide, yep. I think if you're into AFL, yep. the divide between sport and the world of theatre yep. is wafer thin. But in, <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Like even yeah, in totally. Melbourne, if you talk to a theatre person, yeah, yeah, yeah. are you in the AFL? No, nah, who's your team? St Kilda? Yeah. You know, but here in Sydney and Brisbane, you're into sport yep. or you're into theatre. Yeah, 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 totally. It's like, I love kicking them, them oval balls and, and date rape. Yeah. You know, that's kind of, uh, yeah. And, mm. well, you, you know what made me think, uh, one of the things that led me to thinking that was last year when uh, the NRL final was coming up and I don't follow it at all. I, c- I just can't get into it. And But I said to a few people who were excited, they were so glad they were playing the Melbourne team. Mm-hmm. And, they, and I said, oh, what don't you like about the Melbourne team? They said, oh, they like, like AFL teams always turning up, you know, yeah, in, yeah. in suits. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, right. They're yeah. not wearing their best tracksuit to the commissioner. Like, you're getting angry about, oh, right, okay. Then that kind of really shone a light on it. I never liked, like, just sort of like um, a violent, like really aggressive alpha males just always yeah. irked me. Yeah. And then when I s- constantly saw the news stories about, like, the gang rape and... Oh, yeah. Well, I was like, fuck, like, I really hate... I hate this. Yeah. I hate this so much. Yeah, you know, you know what? One of the hardest things uh, to endure as a fan of something. Yeah, was um, you know I'm a big basketball guy. I've yeah. been a Lakers fan since uh, 1983, and uh, you know there was a period where you know my team won two championships, and our best player was a guy who settled a rape case out of court, and Kobe Bryant. Right, and you. And you know what? I could enjoy that we won, Mm -hmm. but I would be a liar if I didn't say it's tainted. Like, I can't quite enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't can't 100% enjoy it because, you know, like the only way I could have 100% enjoyed it is if for both championships, he'd ruptured an Achilles at the start of each series and then the rest of the team won. (laughs) And then I'd be like, oh, well, he helped get us there, but I don't have to concentrate on that. I can concentrate on those guys. Mm. Speaking of those guilty pleasures, I used to be really... When I went from being an emo to like a bit of a punk, I really liked this band called Head PE. I don't know if right. you know them. No. It stands for Higher Education Planet Earth. Right. And they're very punk in the way. They're very fuck the system. And I started listening more and more. And then I realized they were singing all the time about New World Order, the Illuminati, you know, the and also like the Jews run the media. Oh, really? And I had such a weird... Oh, my God. Yeah, I run the media. It was like it was like, <laughs> yeah, oh no, you. they hate they don't hate Jews, but it was it was a little bit anti-Semitic. Yeah, and then I got over that hump, and then I was like really into them again. Right, but it took me a while to realize their entire message was New World Order. Right, like their entire message. Yeah, like a lot of punk bands, you know, have a have a message. Yeah, and I just thought it was sick music because they rapped and stuff. Yeah, the lead singer was half Latino, half black. I was like, he's the most authentic rapper that will ever exist. Right, uh, and then I was like, ah, oh, it's all like you know, steal from the rich, give to the poor. Yeah, wow, that yeah. sort of fuck the Jews. Right, like, yeah, oh, it's man. disappointing. I think the closest I've ever come to something like that is when I was uh, young and there was a, you know, a grunge band that I really liked. And then after a while, you went, oh, "Wait a minute, they're speaking about Jesus." Oh, I thought when they were singing about love, they were singing about their partners. Okay, I thought you were going to say like neo-Nazism, like Gorilla oh. Biscuits. 
No, I think I'd like in a weird way. I yeah. would I would bounce back from oh, neo Nazis. Oh, that, they're the worst. But <laughs> then I could reconcile it in a much quicker way. But you know, yeah, devout talk- Christians are way worse. Oh, just the worst. I actually went to a Christian rock festival uh, at Universal Studios in really? two thousand and six. Was it on a dare? No. Were you trying to impress a girl? No. Were you high on ammo? No. I had this band that I was obsessed with called uh, uh, Family Force Five. <laughs> right. And I never knew that they were a religious band at yeah. all. And I was at Universal Studios in Orlando with my friend. And then I saw these billboards everywhere called Rock the Universe. And I didn't notice at the time that inside the O of Rock, there was a tiny crucifix. Oh, yeah, well I never, they... like, it never crossed my mind. And there was another band playing called Grits, who was this hip-hop group I used to listen to. And there right. was Jars of Clay. Yeah. I had no idea. Anyway, I bought my ticket. My friend Jake's like, fuck no, I'm not coming to this. And we still didn't know it was Christian. He just hates music. Right. And I bought my ticket. He hates music. <laughs> yeah. Almost immediately after I bought my ticket. Like, the second I turned around... And I walked into the park and there was people doing the, Jesus, Jesus, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. Oh. With banners and shit. Like full on. And I, 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 it was so funny to me. Yeah, yeah. I was the only Jew in like the whole park. And then when I was moshing to Family Force 5, I saw this woman next to me who had a little Star of David necklace. Oh. And I was like, oh, one of the choos- chosen ones. And I said, <laughs> I said, hi, I don't mean to pry, but are you Jewish? And she's like, Jews for Jesus. I was like, no! No! I'm the only one here. But it was really fun. I met these two uh, little Bible-bashing Christian girls, and it was... I'd just try and make them act up. Like, I right. got them to swear and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is so cool. Yeah. And it was... You were the snake in the garden. So, you had this, like, music festival going on, plus all the rides were open. Right. It was the coolest thing ever. And then they had they had an, an energy drink section. Right. Because there was no alcohol, and you could get free energy drinks. And it was, um, it's Cola's, uh, Coca-Cola, it's Full Throttle, which uh, is our mother. Right. That's what, um, yeah, our mother is Full Throttle. And there was some famous, like, Christian DJ. And right. So, I was, like, listening to all this cool music. So, Family Force 5, the closest I ever heard them get was they'd talk about, like, getting higher. You know, like... Right this is my drug, but they never said Jesus or God. Um, And they were super deep South sort of country bumpkins who now do rap rock. Yeah. And it never occurred to me. Yeah. But I felt a little icky after and I stopped listening to them just because my taste in music has changed and now it consists of quality music. But it was, it was the weirdest night of my life. Oh yeah, but you did it. I and that's a, that's a good experience. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we, we should uh, finish up. Yes, of um, course. But uh, what what, what uh, festivals do you have coming up? Are you doing Melbourne? Doing all of Melbourne. Yep. 22 shows. Yep. I'm at the Victoria Hotel. Oh, great. What at time? Six. At um, six. So 5 p.m. Sundays. Yeah. Um, Man, you'll be wrapped on Sunday. Yeah, so you can come straight from church, which I think is good. Right. It's, uh, Come straight from uh, from church to cleanse yourself with, totally. your, with your show. My and show is very cleansing. And and what and so you were saying that there's heaps of things going on with the show. Yeah. But what, what what's uh, can you give us a specific through line? There isn't a through line, right? Uh, at all. This year, I was supposed to write a play about uh, cheese dreams, and that didn't happen. So now I just have this sh- shamozzle of. By the way, do you do you have a uh, does your uh, Entry into the Melbourne Guide, say, cheese dreams, no, ahoy. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Isn't that the best? But that show was called um, the, Supreze, the Supreme Keys to the uh, Easy Breezy Lactose Freezy. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was mental. It was kind of yeah. going to be like the Matrix meets Assassin's Creed. Right. Like people are um, kidnapped and put into this system and fed different strains of cheese to in- elicit these strains. Right. I'm definitely going to write that show. You need it to write that show. It sounds fucking sick. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this show is, it's essentially um, all my best bits of the last six years. Oh yeah, great. Yeah. So it's a best of. But I'm not, I'm not famous enough to like bill it as a best of. So right. it's just, it's called Young, Dumb and Full of Pun. Right. Um, so it's your, it's it's your best bits. It's my so best it's, bits. Yeah, yeah. That's a that is a perfectly good reason to put a show together. Yeah. Well, you it's know? it's yeah. my first Melbourne full run. Yeah. Solo. Yeah. So I used to do shows with Cameron James, yeah. Declan James. Yeah. Uh, and we're both doing uh, all of Melbourne this year solo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's 
it's going to be mental, I think. Yeah, so it's if people be haven't seen you before, they'll get a real uh, sense of uh, what you've been doing for the last six years, exactly, which will be great. Exactly. And then Sydney Comedy Festival? I am. I'm doing the 18th, 20th, and 21st yeah. of May. Uh, is that down at, at the factory? The factory theatre, yeah. Yeah, the factory the does those staggered yeah. runs, don't they? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm bummed I missed um, Brisbane and Adelaide Fringe. Cause I, because this is my best of show, I would have loved to do, like, yeah. really drive it into the ground. You can do them next year while I you're can. working on your new one. I can, yeah, exactly. You should apply for a moose head for that um, I w- other show. I should have done it for this well, do one. It. but uh, No, 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 not for your best of. For no. You, for your no, cheese no, no. show. For my cheese show, yeah. Yeah. At the moment, my next show, if I don't do the cheese show, is called You Can Run But You Can't Jekyll. So I'm uh, pretty proud of that. Yep. <laughs> I love a misleading pun. You should uh, you should go and check out the uh, three Moosehead shows, uh, mm-hmm. the the Watson one, and uh, there's one with oh, yeah, Tessa Waters. I will Waters definitely see the Watson one. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they always do uh, some really fun and creative stuff. Uh, have a look at what they're doing and then uh, Michael Williams is doing the yep. other one yep, yep, yep. Michael's He's a amazing. lovely kid and uh, as I said Tessa Waters I'd watch anything Tessa does she's yep. fantastic Yeah, but um, yeah maybe that's the aim and you'll have to come back on uh, the podcast that was a lot of fun I would love to uh, good luck for your run thank you so much <laughs>